What's up guys, welcome back. Um, today I have a very cool, very nice, old school camera. It's awesome. Okay, so of course, our first question, as always, what is it? Today we have the Polaroid land camera. We have the 320 and we have the 330. Now I'm doing two because these are very similar. There are only two differences between the two, but let's get into it. These were produced by the Polaroid company. They were produced between the years of 1960, oh gosh, what is it? 1969 and 1971. The model is the 320 and this model is the 330. First, I'm gonna jump into this one, then we'll get to this one. Not too many differences between the two, but secondly, we need to know, how does it work? This is how it works. You push down here, this is the case, this is the cover. You push down here to depress the little clip on there and it pops off, okay? So it's not the smoothest thing, but it pops off, it opens. Here's the camera. It's meant to protect all this stuff because you have your lens that's exposed, you have all this. This, this is uh, very delicate, so it's here to protect. You push right here on this little metal contraption there and it comes off. So you can take this off I find it to be a lot easier when it's off, personally, um, so I always take it off. They were courteous enough to put little numbers here to uh, direct you as to where to go to take the photograph. First off, first off, first and foremost, you have to push this button here and you push up. Some of these buttons serve multiple functions and you have to, it was very hard for me to figure this out at first. I didn't have instructions, I didn't really look anything up, I was just kind of messing with it. So you push up on this one and it unlocks that and it pops out like, like so and you, you can kind of help it out a little bit and it locks, it locks into place once it's out. Secondly, I don't know why they did this, but so the camera's open, it's ready to go. Uh, they put number two here, but it's not wound yet, so you can't really take the picture. This is number three on the end of the, this is kind of how you wind the camera and then you press number two. So you have to go to number three, wind it, number two, photo, and then, when you're done, there's a little paper tab that pops out right here. So you pull that paper tab out and then this one pops out afterwards. And then you pull this one out and you have your photo. This is just a negative. I've already peeled apart this one. I'm just using this as, as an example. You have to wait mm, anywhere from like 30 to 60 seconds. I usually wait like two minutes. I found that sometimes when you snap the photo and you let it sit in here for a minute, like two minutes and then pull it out and then wait a little bit longer than usual and then open it. The colors are a lot more vibrant. So I feel like if you snap the photo and just pull it out and yank it out immediately, the colors are not gonna be as vibrant. But to focus this camera, there's two holes here. Next to your viewfinder, there's a rangefinder, and you, so there are two images. Push these two back and forth like this and it takes those two images that look like circles and when you line them up, when you line up the two images like this and the hands and the fingers come together or wherever, like that, you know, cause whoop, and it lines up, that's when you, your subject is in focus and you can snap the photo. To close this camera, you, there's a writing, there's a little etched in the metal right here that says press to close. You press down on the metal, it seems a little counterintuitive. You press down on the metal to kind of bend it because it locks and then it moves back in like so and the camera is closed back up again. You can pop this back on and it closes back up. Okay, so on the back side of this thing, there is a compartment here on the side for a battery. It's a three volt battery. It takes a three volt. Close that back up. It snaps closed really nicely. It feels good, lots of quality in there. To open up the bottom here where you load in the cartridge film, you flip this little switch here and it unlatch, unlatches this. This pulls open. You feed your film in here. It's, I don't have an old case. I wish I did right now. Same great film, same fast loading. in right here and you close it back up. But you gotta make sure your, your paper tabs are all popping out when you put it in and close it. It feels weird at first because the paper is popping out like right here. Here, if I can get my fingernail in it. Um, 
And once you pull that tab out, then your first tab pops out this little piece here. You have a 75, you have a speed you can choose from your film speed, 75 to 3000. You uh, turn this little plastic lens encasement here to lighten or darken the image depending on how much sunlight or no sunlight or flash or whatever it is that you're using. So that's that. You can plug a flash into here. I noticed you can plug a flash in. So that's a cool little feature. The lens on this camera, on both of these cameras, is a 114 millimeter lens. It is an f8.8. You need a lot of light. You need a lot of light to take a picture. And the two differences between these cameras, I'm gonna pull up the 330 right now, is that the two differences between these cameras um, are that the, the lens on this one is glass and the lens on this one is plastic. So I haven't shot with this one yet, but I'm looking forward to it. And I'm assuming that the pictures it takes are going to be a lot more in focus and a lot sharper than the pictures this one takes, although this one still takes incredible photos. This I still have to use. Again, I said it has the glass lens and the only other difference between the two is that this has a self timer on the back. So if you wanna get one of these in 2019 where you can take a selfie or something, this is probably the one you wanna go with because it has this self timer on the back. Otherwise, and you just wanna shoot and have fun, get any one of them you can. Obviously, this I think this one is a little bit more rare than the 320. The 320 seems a little bit more plasticky, where this the front of this, I can feel with the back of my hand that it's metal. It's definitely cold. This part right here is metal. I love the way it looks. Uh, let's go over a brief little history of the self-developing film. So self-developing film was first produced, invented by Edwin Land. In Boston, Dr. Edwin Land claims to have invented a new camera which will revolutionize photography. In uh, between the years of 1943 and 1947, and the Land camera produced by Polaroid was manufactured between the years of 1948 and 1983. Let's see. Now, how about that, hmm? <laughs> Meet the Swinger, the incredible new Polaroid land camera for 1995. I mean, it's Christmas. Wow! <laughs> Later, Edwin Land retired. Polaroid dropped the land from the name, so it was just Polaroid, not Polaroid land camera. Just Polaroid, the film that I use for this. It's by Fujifilm. I think it's the 100C by Fujifilm. There are, there's a Dutch company, I think, that still produces some of the film, but you have to be very special to get a hold of it, I think. The film was discontinued in 2008, so whatever is on the market right now is out there, and that's just what it is, and nobody has tried to produce it since 2017. I believe that there was a company that produced it, um, but they shut down. But like I said, you can still find the Fujifilm 100C out there. The price has jumped immensely. It has skyrocketed. Like three or four months ago, I was buying this film at $40 for 10 frames. I know, still expensive, crazy. But I was buying $40 for 10 frames. Now, it has shot up to $70 for 10 frames in the past three months. So whatever you can find, I would suggest picking it up. It's just gonna keep going up in price. Buy like seven of them if you can. Put, put them in your refrigerator. Uh, keep them, hold on to them and the price is just gonna keep going up and up and up. Okay, I did wanna say really quickly, um, I met a photographer in New York City. I was going around just shooting B-roll, taking shots, going around, and I see this older man um, dressed to the nines, looking really cool, and he's got this huge land camera, and he built this land camera himself. He modified it, he built it, he did this whole thing. His name is Louis Mendez. He's been shooting for over 40 years, I'm pretty sure. He's been shooting photos for so long. You can find him in New York City. Uh, I think it's like 20 bucks for a portrait, which is not that bad when you consider that the film is $70. But he'll take a portrait of you on the street. I think it's like 20 bucks, maybe his prices went up because it, it was, you know, super expensive. But Louis Mendez, very nice guy, very cool. It was so cool to run into him and meet him. He's kind of like an NYC, uh, staple like he's just you know he hangs out around B&H um, he hangs out around that area sometimes you can catch him over there what are my thoughts on this um, 
my thoughts on this are that I love this camera. I've brought it on hikes with me. I've brought it to so many different places and I've taken so many pictures with it. Um, it is an amazing camera, it really is. It truly has changed the way that I think about photography. I'm more of a videographer than anything, but I do enjoy taking photographs. I do love photos. It is a great machine. It is such a good machine. It's so cool. And not to mention when people see it, they're like, what is that? You know, it looks like it's from like the 20s. You should have a huge flash and you're shooting Marilyn Monroe or something. I've taken some amazing photographs with this thing and I, it doesn't disappoint me. I'm probably gonna go out and get more film for this. It has never disappointed me. Well, it's, <laughs> I shouldn't say it's never disappointed me, but my girlfriend has taken some amazing pictures with this. She seems to take her time a little bit more with the ph photography and I just snap away, but it is a very fun camera. And I, I, I'm selling myself short because I have taken some amazing pictures with this camera, but it's an amazing camera. It's an amazing piece of equipment. It is an amazing machine. I love the Polaroid land cameras. And if I find another one of these, I'm probably gonna pick it up just to, just to have it. This again is so cool. This is the one I bought for my girlfriend. It has Lenny Shelton in the back. You can't, come on, you can't beat that. Lenny Shelton is just like, who is that Lenny Shelton guy? All right, he's out there somewhere. But anyways, thank you guys for watching this. Um, if you enjoyed this, give me a like, give me a thumbs up, give me a subscribe. Um, do your thing, and I will catch you on the next one. Thank you. Pew, pew.